Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Didsbury Art Studio and I'm Sally. And in today's video, I've got some hydrodict fabric that I'd like to make into a quilted piece. So I'm going to be using free motion embroidery and I'm going to do some parts of it with beading. I've got this adorable hydro dipped cotton fabric here and I'm just gonna use some wadding behind it. I'm actually gonna go quite thick, so I've got two layers there, and just pinned in each corner before I start to tack them both together with some large stitches just to keep all the layers together. We've got the laser, Leila. I lose my breath whenever I see you. Alrighty, so what I want to do next is obviously I'm going to work into this piece with free motion embroidery, but I've got these silk threads which I want to use. So I'm just going to check out the colours that are going on in this piece and there are little bits of red. So I'm going to use some red thread with this. I also think a bit a bit of orange would go well. Obviously we've got the yellowy, yeah it's quite a strong yellow, that would go very nicely. I'm going to go with some black, some of these really pad them out areas there. And obviously, I'm going to do some, some blue in there. Do I think a bit of pink with the red? Potentially. Right, we're using quite a few there, which is good. All right then. Just need to wind some bobbins up. Okay, gang, so we're going to go with black to begin with. Okay, and what I'm going to concentrate on here is starting here in the middle and I'm going to go around some of these black marks that have been created by the spray paint on the water. I want to make them really padded out. And so we're going to rock and roll. We're going to outline some of these black lines in here. I'm just going to be taking my time. I'm holding on to the edge of the fabric. If I was doing this in school, I would highly recommend that you put this into an embroidery hoop. Other than that, you can use some little grip fabrics that you can pop on here. Some people like the grip gloves that you can wear to hold your fabric completely up to you. So I'm taking my time and I'm outlining the shape. So can you see what's happening there? 
I've been outlining some of the shape here and I'm just going to continue, but it's starting to pad out a little bit, which is fabulous. You set my word on fire. Here you can see that I have just been outlining just this middle area here. I haven't got too far, but I've decided at the minute that I'm not really going to be filling in some of these shapes. I just want them outlined so that it's going to throw it up and make them turns really um, padded out. So I'm not going to go too extreme with the stitching. I think I'm just going to, I will use all the thread colours, but I think I'm just going to outline some of the shapes and then I think I will go in with a little bit more beading because I really enjoyed the beading and I think it will work well with some of the smaller beads, the seed beads. So I'll crack on with the sewing and catch up with you in a minute. So I've done a little bit more stitching and just looking at the overall piece here, I'm just trying to balance out where I want the padded areas. So I've got some free motion embroidery over here here and I'm going to add just a little bit more down over here again with the black and then just to say that if I'm following this effect just coming up around the back here if I was going backwards like this I actually can't see the line to follow it so all you need to do is just swivel your fabric around and head in the direction that you can see it And you have the luxury of the free motion foot to be able to do that. So it's just little things like that make life a little bit easier. And I've just jumped onto using some blue thread there. I've not even changed the bobbin from the black and it's not really affecting the whole colour. And even if it did, I'd quite like to see if it did, uh, but it's not particularly at the minute. When I come up to a tacking stitch, just to be a little bit more careful, I am just lifting up the free motion foot and just popping it back over the tacking stitch so that this does not get caught under the stitch. So what I've done is I've jumped from here over to here. You can either lift up your foot, cut off your thread and move across, or you can just drag across and cut your threads later. And I'm going to stick with straight stitch because over here there's such intricate patterns that it's going to be really difficult. I wanted to switch to a little bit of zigzag stitch, but I don't think that's going to be appropriate at the minute. And what I'm doing now is almost, if you can imagine, if you're really into doing continuous line drawings, this is perfect for you because you're literally doing the same thing on fabric. Right, I'm going to switch over to my blue bobbin and see how much of a difference this is going to make to sewing the blue and letting it show up on the fabric. So where do I want to go? Let's go over here. Okay, I'm just going to do a little pop of red. Look at this one. Sleeping, Lola. Are you sleeping? <laughs> Ooh, I am liking the red over here. So this is what we've got so far. I'm not going to use the pink or the orange because I feel like there's enough going on. I don't want to lose the marbled effect that is so stunning on here. 
And I think if I worked into it too much with the stitch, we'd lose that element to it. But you can see it's nice and padded out. I think limit the colours. So I've just used the yellow, the blue, and a little bit of black, a tiny bit of red. And I think that is enough. You know, I've tried to balance out where the threads have gone and see if it all kind of coordinates. I think it does. The only thing that I would do possibly is a little bit of yellow down here because this is all a bit flat. So maybe I'll just add a little bit more there and then I think we're done. You make me smile, what is it that you do? Yeah, I've just finished it and just put a little bit more down there. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut out all the tacking stitches and then I'll be left with doing some beading. So yeah, I've got all the tacking to cut out. That's the back, so you can see how much sewing I've done. And then that's the front with the beading on. I was just doing a little bit of, I was adding some bugle beads on there. And I think that's just about enough. I wouldn't really want to do too much because I think it deter from the overall hydro dipping piece. But thank you so much for watching today. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Do hit the notification button to see when I upload next. And I shall see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye. Yeah.